Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Got a crazy story out of Michigan. Headline includes a town named Franklin. Franklin, Michigan. Tiny little town in Oakland County. A uh, very, very good friend of mine grew up there. Uh, I used to hang out with him all the time over there in Franklin, Michigan. It's got a beautiful downtown area and a cider mill, for those of you who are curious. Headline from Channel 2, Fox 2. Franklin Woman's Home Raided in $1.6 Million Art Scheme. Tim sent this to me. He said, Steve, check it out. It's in your backyard, I think. He's close. That's, <laughs> that's real close to my backyard. <laughs> Amy Lang wrote this for Fox 2. Uh, the FBI descended on a Franklin home Friday as part of an investigation into a high-end art scheme where an art gallery owner is accused of defrauding at least 12 clients by selling their valuable pieces but not telling them. And of course, the reason you don't tell them is if you don't tell them, they don't know that you sold a piece of theirs and they're entitled to money. And that, of course, would show you what might go wrong here. FBI evidence teams spent the day at the home of the woman who's an art dealer and owner of a gallery called the Wendy Halstead Gallery in Birmingham. Uh, According to investigators, she's accused of stealing from her clients, preying on the elderly in a scheme that went on for several years, again, according to investigators. Now, there was an affidavit that says that an 82-year-old victim gave the woman $900,000 worth of fine art photography in 2018 for her to sell on consignment in her gallery. Included in the collection was a mural-sized photograph by Ansel Adams called the Tetons and the Snake River. Ansel Adams, of course, a very, very famous landscape photographer who shot a lot of stuff in black and white. And his photographs are beautiful and iconic. You've seen many of them. Uh, Now, here's the situation. The owner of the gallery agreed to sell the photograph for $685,000. And if she did that, would get a 5% commission. 5% commission. Investigators say she, however, sold it for $440,000. But the victim was never notified it had been sold and never received any money. Meanwhile, an art appraiser and co-owner of another art gallery says that clients expect more from gallery owners. I hope so. (laughs) It surprises me that people think they can get away with these kinds of things nowadays. You know we are very careful with our clients, she said. That's the other owner uh, of a different gallery. When you hear somebody in the community is taking advantage of somebody, it's very disheartening. In another case, investigators say relatives of an 89-year-old client with Alzheimer's wanted their Ansel Adams photos returned. Instead of the original signed photograph, they say instead they got back a copy, a copy. And as you can imagine, Ansel Adams' photographs are widely available. And you can just download them and find them on the internet, print them out if you want, and say, hey, I got an Ansel Adams. But the valuable ones are the ones that can be documented as ones that he shot. I believe he even printed them himself and signed them. And, and so, obviously, something signed by him, printed by him, taken by him, is worth a lot more than the photo you downloaded and printed yourself. When clients tried contacting the woman who's at the center of this story, according to the affidavit, she sent emails to clients from fake accounts that were purported to be from associates of hers, <laughs> claiming she was in poor health, on a transplant list, in a coma twice, and she even claimed to have had a double lung transplant, which investigators say none of which was true. So when you get the note from the assistant saying she's in a coma, (laughs) you're like, what? Really? Is this before or after the double lung transplant? Um, I couldn't imagine trying to pull a fast one with someone like that. It's really, really concerning. The other art appraiser said, It's really frustrating for someone in the art field, especially someone that's doing it legitimately. Fox 2 contacted a gallery in Florida where this same art dealer at the center of this controversy leased space, but they declined to comment. However, the affidavit said that she left behind 62 photographs. According to the FBI, more than 100 fine art photographs of the combined value of $1.6 million were consigned to the woman and were either not returned or were sold without money being delivered to victims. And then they say there are bank records 
indicating there could be even more victims. So she's charged with mail fraud and wire fraud, which explains why the feds are involved. Now, the fact that she's selling some things in Florida, some things in Michigan might also do that, but I think they do the uh, allegations in the complaint to get them in so they can do the search and seize what they need to get. And of course, they can always add complaints later, right? Or add charges later. She was then released on bond and is due back in court next month. So the basic story is allegations. People take their art to an art gallery in Birmingham, Michigan. And the dealer there who runs the art gallery says, I'll sell your stuff and I'll get a commission. When it sells, I'll call you up, let you know. And you can come in and get your 95%. I get my 5%. And that seems like a great deal if that works out. The allegation is that, number one, she sold stuff without ever telling the true owner and never paying that person. Okay? But interestingly enough, there's another problem that happens. And, and this happens in the world of consignments. And I'm mentioning this because it, it, <laughs> I'm familiar with it because of my own dealings. And also, I've known other people who say this has happened to them. But let's suppose that you own something that you want to sell. And this is in pre-eBay days in particular. But you own something you want to sell. So you know somebody who says, I can sell it for you on consignment. Give it to me. I'll take care of selling it. And then I just get a slice of whatever it is that you sell it for. Okay? So, okay. So the person has the thing in their possession. They don't own it, by the way. They are simply holding it on consignment. But you still own it until they sell it with your permission. What often happens is, let's suppose you've got an item you want to sell for 100 bucks. Let's say it's the infamous widget, okay? And the widget is going to be sold for $100. It's a $100 widget. And, by the way, uh, the person on consignment who sells it gets 10%. So if they sell the widget, they get 10 bucks, and you get 90 as the true owner of the widget who put it up on consignment. So the first thing that can happen is someone walks into the shop and says, how much for the widget? They go, 110 bucks. Really? I'll buy it. So they buy it for $110. And the shop owner sends 90 to you saying, we sold your widget. You got your 90 bucks. Now, some people are going to say, Steve, that can't be illegal because the guy said, I'll sell it. I'll give you 90 bucks. Well, it depends on how they have the arrangement going. But it would certainly seem a little underhanded if I said, I'm going to sell it for 100 bucks and pay you 10%. If I sell it for 110, there's something deceitful there. However, the more common thing that happens is somebody walks in and goes, 100 bucks the widget, yes, I'll take it. The guy at the consignment shop sells it for 100 bucks, but then calls you up and says, um, would you take 80 for it? Would you take 80? You think to yourself, well, let's see now. If I take 80 for it and he takes 10%, which is eight bucks, I could do the math. I'm a busy man, but I get substantially less than 90. But if you say, yes, sure, I will. He sends you 72 bucks, but he sold it for 100. He just says he sold it for 80. <laughs> and what's funny is I had someone tell me that exact story. When I was right out of high school, I'd put something in a consignment shop to sell. And it had a price on it for like, I don't know, 100 bucks, whatever. It wasn't a terrible, big amount of money. But it, for me, it was. At the time, it was, it was money. And someone told me, said, Steve, by the way, be very, very careful. Because someone might call you and say, hey, we got an offer substantially for less. Would you take it? Just to see if you'll take it. And, and you know, they say, if you, if you are happy taking less money, you can. But, but, you know, if you want to, stick to your guns, you know. So I consigned something. And I believe it was for 100 bucks. And the guy at the consignment shop calls me and goes, hey, will you take 90? And my brother had just told me that story and said, no, I will not take 90. I'm firm on 100. The guy goes, oh, okay. He hangs the phone up. 60 seconds later, calls me back, yeah, it sold it for 100. <laughs> now, did he really have somebody in front of him who said, I'll pay 90? And then when I said no, they bumped it to 100? Or was the guy pulling the old, you know... And I can also tell you that the not paying when something gets sold thing is a very serious problem. I know people who've dealt with consignments. Now, this one's not happened to me because the guy who sold my item called me immediately said, you have a sale. It's sold for 100 bucks. Come get your money. But 
I know many people who say that they put stuff into consignment stores, an actual storefront where they've got stuff on consignment. Time goes by, they never hear anything. Never hear anything. Never hear anything. Then they call the store. They say, hey, how are things going? Things are slow. I haven't sold anything for a while. Yeah, your thing's sitting right here. For whatever reason, they decide to go in. They go into the store and they're walking around. They can't find their item anywhere. They go find the owner's store. Hey, I'm just curious. I, I called earlier today about whether my thing had sold or not. And I was just thinking maybe I'm going to come down here and maybe take it home or something. I don't know. But I, 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 I want, you know, I'm curious. Where is it? It just sold five minutes before you walked in the door. In fact, you might have walked past. Did you see someone walking by carrying your thing? <laughs> no, no. The streets of this town are like a ghost town. Never saw anything. Just sold it. Here, let me pay you. And obviously what some places do is the old Rob Peter to pay Paul. They're, they're taking the money from this, paying their bills, hoping that if you come in, they'll have gotten money from another sale to cover you. See? And it only falls apart in, if everyone comes in at the exact same time. And I'm going to end with another example. And I actually know somebody uh, who makes um, handcrafted items out of wood, shall we say. And they are in a variety of stores in and around the area where he makes his stuff. And he puts things in stores on consignment. Now, these are not used items. They're not like old guitars or anything. These are things that he made that he can recognize. And by the way, if you're familiar with his work, other people can recognize them too. And he puts them in stores all the time, all over the place. And uh, he'll drop some stuff off at different stores and all the stores are saying, we need more, we need more. We're, we're, the stuff is selling the hotcakes, we need more. And one store, radio silence. So he'll just go, oh, I'll swing by there one of these days when I'm in the, in the neighborhood. So he's out dropping off stuff at other stores. He swings into one store, he's walking around looking. He can't spot his stuff anywhere. And you can see, I'm just curious. Um, I'm delivering more stuff to different stores. Uh, have you guys sold any of my stuff yet? Oh, yeah, meant to call you. We just sold all of it. <laughs> In fact, you might have walked. Did you see it go walking down the street? Maybe you just passed it. It's like they had like four items. They didn't sell all four of them just now. But that, again, is the same situation where stores are having cash flow problems. So it's a crazy situation here because it involves so much money. And you would think, and by the way, this high-end art gallery is in Birmingham, Michigan. Birmingham, Michigan is a town I grew up in. But Birmingham has got a really, really beautiful little downtown area. There's a whole bunch of art galleries there. Very, very high-end art galleries. It just happens to be something that evolved over time. And the idea that an art gallery there led to this bust with an allegation of a $1.6 million art scheme is what caught my attention. So we'll see what happens. I'll follow this story from Amy Lang, Franklin, Michigan. Fox 2 ran it. Franklin Woman's Home Rated and $1.6 million art scheme. And Tim sent it to me. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. My goal is no longer to get more done, but rather to have less to do.